Hello, everybody. Hi, peeps. Hi, Kira, Fanny, and Megan. Hello. Hey. So here, another dev problem of the week, well, the month. Yeah, we didn't do that. You know, We have to do one uh, this month, at least from pencil and paper. So we're doing something a little bit differently today. Okay, I'm giving you uh, some challenges today. Um, so, so what I want to do is to give you a bunch of problem at the same time. Um, oh, do we have a problem? Who's not seeing someone? Everybody's going? Yeah. We see you. We see you, yeah. fine. And I yeah. hear you, so yeah. let's roll with here. it. Yeah. 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 So you only see yourself? I hear you, yeah. Oh. I'm all alone in this dark square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm alone. Okay, sorry. You're not alone. Don't worry. We're that far. Not that far. So let's try something. I will give you a bunch of problems, and the deal is try to fix it. You know, very rapidly, quickly. Give you some some things just out of the blue I found here and here on interwebs, and you'll figure out what tools you want. I have a whimsical open. I have a Figma open. I have a Myro open. It's up to you. I'll present Mm. you something. And we can just talk about it, give some any kind of solutions. Or if you want to draw something, no problem. Tell me, I'll share something, and we can have fun. So that's my hypothesis. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ready. Yeah. Yeah. ready. Ready. Let's do that. Okay. So first problem. Who want to read it? Megan, do you want to read it? Sure. What's the best way to indicate that the pop-up blocker may stop the user from performing a simple task? So there's an application where users will have to have the option to open all selected items in a new window. Unfortunately, the browser will block pop-ups and the user might not realize that his browser is stopping him from doing it. What's your solution? So you do understand you, you select a lot of things, you open a ton of windows. So it's up to you. You want to talk about it, play something with um, whimsical Figma or just, you know, just talk about it. What do you think? Let's, think, let's talk about it to begin with. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Megan? I'm thinking that if this is a, a huge known problem um, and we're in a browser and we know that there's a large number of people with pop-up blockers, it might be something we expose straight away, either like by text or maybe there's a little thing like a icon that you hover over, um, something something that's already accessible even before they execute. So do you know that the, they have a pop-up blocker? Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm wondering. How mm. much control or even visibility do we have on what happens in the browser? Because mm-hmm. mm. I've actually had this happen to me like super recently where the Google sign-on, the Google uh, sign-on, sign-in with Google opened in a, bra- in a pop-up and then mm. I browsers show like a tiny icon mm-hmm. telling mm. me like that I can click on that to go to the thing. Mm. But the app yeah. itself, I mean, you can explain like you might have a pop-up blocker. You mm. might have to mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. every link. But well no, yeah. That's Ooh, on every link. Okay. And yeah. every time and mm-hmm. when? Yeah, yeah. So it's um but I do think the computer can do it because I've been on um uh, oh wait, ad blockers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. Maybe I'm thinking about ad blockers. Maybe they're the same. But when you go on like a news site and they're like, "Hey, can you turn off your ad blockers? Because uh, we want advertising revenue." And you're like, mm-hmm. "No." Um, is that the same as a pop up blocker? It is in a way. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. It is. Um, think about, you know, you have a big data table in selecting a lot of rows and say, mm. open all of them in new windows. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. we would want, it, probably we would want some kind of secondary confirmation um, that the command, like the command fired, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like you were saying, um, Megan, kind of like um, this one open, this one, like toasts mm. or something like that. Mm. That's but a bit more persistent, a little bit less of those like mm-hmm. transient ones that just disappear. Mm-hmm. We want to be like the things we opened, this, 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 mm. maybe, and then you clicked on it and then you tried to click, you tried to click. Oh, it's mm. not working. Mm. And then we could potentially detect if you tried 
we could say, yo, you might have a pop-up blocker or your pop-up mm. blocker is just uh, preventing mm -hmm. it from happening. Mm -hmm. Are we showing that every time that they are trying to open new windows, a bunch of new windows? Something probably that's agnostic yeah. to the layout of the page. So, so think can... about an enterprise UX where you have to do that every day. I mean, uh, if this is an enterprise tool and if we do assume they're using it the whole day, every day, that, that might be something they, you know, get wise to pretty quickly. Hmm. How, also, how you oh, sorry. No, go go ahead, Frank. I'm just thinking if it's like an inter if let's picture like an enterprise table, and then you're like mm. opening a bunch of items in window in different windows or tabs. Mm. There might be something kind of almost built in or like in line that tells you like this item is open, mm. so that you are clearly aware that it's like currently being edited oh. potentially. A similar like similarly to how you can be logged into the same account as someone else. Hmm. Or and then it the system kind of tells you like, hey, you might create conflicts here. Hmm. Maybe some kind of a like a built-in indi indicator of that sort. Mm -hmm. mm. We, That's interesting. If it if we inform the user at least once that there's maybe a problem and you have to unblock it, maybe it's done. We don't have to do all of this. Hmm. So what would be the cheap option to 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 inform the user that if you unblock the popper for this website, you you go you done for life how we can do that even more cheaply i, I don't have any answers i'm just trying to, mm. yeah. yeah well maybe it could be the, my so go ahead. Oh. <laughs> the, the toaster confirmation could just like indicate like okay uh, x number of tabs open and then like a small um if you're not seeing them this might be the reason mm -hmm. a bit like you can I don't know in which context, but you, you often get like if if the you're not seeing X, you should refresh. In a toast, in a toast. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. I would do a toast or a banner, either mm -hmm. one. Hmm. Yeah, I think both would probably be cute. What would you choose, uh, Megan? Toast or banner? Well, honestly, I think there's also um, it, it depends on the context. Like if. If this is one really big thing that's really center, central to this enterprise tool, it might be something we even raise the point of at this, you know, depending on their onboarding or setup process, when they set up mm -hmm. their like preferences and stuff, it might mm -hmm. be something we mm -hmm. inform them of right away. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, try to not try to prevent people from even being blocked in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then the backup plan is more of the like, in page hmm. um, indicators and stuff. So onboarding you know, by components and the whole app in general. Oh, good, good. Okay, let's try another one now. Um, Kira, you want to read this? Sure. Ooh, are we talking about tables here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, are column headers required for empty data tables? When a user creates a folder or visits a new page with a table that has no data, they will see an empty state in the table. Do you think column headers are required? In the following four cases, each one shows a table with headers, A, uh, option A, I think is what they mean, mm -hmm. uh, and another without the headers, option B. Which one works better for you? So an example of Windows 11. You have, mm -hmm. you know, you zoom down. in even more. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I had more than that. Oh, you burn. You have you burn Oh, here. sorry. I can zoom into you. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Can I zoom in more? Ooh. Let's see if I can just make it make them better. Yeah. Mm. That's okay. one other example. What else we have? This one. This is Windows 11. So, what do you think? There's no data here. And sometimes you do have columns and sometimes you don't. What do you think? Are they required? We should do we should do like a rapid fire. Yes, thumbs up and no thumbs down. And then we'll see what everybody thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Right. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> wow. Sure, what a column, column headers. Oh, why? Let's let's talk about the why. 
for me, like, especially in the, in the file browser example, mm -hmm. sometimes you just want to kind of just make sure that let's say size is even a, a part of that table. Like you just want to kind of refer to the metadata of the table. Mm -hmm. And then for the Uber, I don't know which use case this shows, but mm -hmm. let's say you're about to, I don't know, list a new car. This kind of gives you a little bit of like which what you're supposed to start working with. Like, oh, I'm, uh, well, this is not exactly like a form, but let's say this was data I'm going to have to fill up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have a bit of a preview of what's going to go in there. So mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me, it's like it's a no brainer. With, with Especially for the Uber situation, I feel like that context makes such a huge difference. Otherwise, it's just it's an illustration and then the idea of trips and it's pretty vague. Um, for folders, I can imagine sometimes like we all know what a folder is and what's involved and stuff. So it's not really high stakes if it says like, oh, this folder is empty. There's nothing here. But when I see that Uber example, I'm like, this gives so much, so much information. Because yeah. it's rarely used, is what you're saying? Um, it's new to me. It's different it's to, to me. Like this, and then I see like, okay, a trip. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Driver, request time. I see, oh, location. Actually, I don't know what amount is. Maybe that's the, the cost. Okay. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And Let's use the example of, I'm sorry. Let's use the example of a finder in Mac. You're using a Mac. So you used to be Mac. Would you be open for Mac to re remove all the headers now that you're used to it? No, I, I really oh. like headers. It's just if it's like super re required, I can see if the like that folder example, is it mm. super duper required? Um, for me, I'm like, mm, it's like, you know, a little bit more wiggle room. I'd be, I wouldn't freak out if my headers weren't there. Is, that's all. Yeah. And I think, too, the the purpose um, of an empty state is really interesting in this in this scenario, because the, the empty state, it doesn't like it needs to tell you something's not broken. And like it's not just like the page is lagging and the page is not working. Um, it needs to tell you where you are. And like as you guys are saying, you get it from metadata. Um, and the thing is with a lot of tables, the, the title of the table is not going to tell you what the table is. The context mm. of the table is going to tell you what the table is. Got it. Interesting. Good. Yeah. I would just add a thing for the finder. Mm -hmm. I think it, just for consistency sake, sake, I would find it really weird if some of the views that are empty wouldn't have the headers, just because this is such a like a deep part of your OS. Mm. And even if, even in enterprise apps, you get used to like customizing your views and then you get used to the fact that every table you can edit the, 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 the order of the headers and everything. And so if a table just happens to be empty, then you can't like prepare your view, or like hide some columns mm. or, you know, don't touch me, my it's things. Like, yeah. Keep it consistent. Just always show me the stuff, even if there is no stuff. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Oh, good. Bravo. We're aligned, team. We're aligned. <laughs> so you're right. <laughs> okay, next problem now. Megan, see you now. Uh, right. No, sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. I, I, I wanted to say Fanny. Fanny. Okay, okay. Right, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Should I click on a graph and what should happen? Okay, like, should I be able to click on a graph and what if, should happen? If I click on a dashboard, okay. what should happen? One, it opens a table with the graph data. Two, drill down to another graph with more detailed information. Three, open a Zoom window to detail a specific time interval or other. Zoom window? Or zoom in? Zoom container. So, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about it. What do you think? Sorry. Ooh. Wait, I have to see them again. <laughs> yeah, can we can we keep it? Can we keep <laughs> it there? <laughs> sure. So, table yeah. with graph data. Drill down to another graph with more detailed info. Open a zoomed, I think, window to detail a specific time interval. So you have a you have a dashboard like, where is there a graph? In. Yeah. If you click on it, can you click on it? Should you click on it? And if you're clicking on it, what will happen? 
the age old question. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is if, if this is it. it I mean, it, this is a very boring answer, but it depends on something. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the, if it's like a super heavy dashboard that has like, you know, you, you, you get to scroll like a couple lengths and it's like heavy, you would want that the card is kind of summarized or at least maybe just it's to like show you the five, last, six, six months, let's say. And then, yes, you might want to be able to click through and view the whole page about that thing that can have yeah. historical data, mm -hmm. potentially yeah. other charts about mm -hmm. other dimensions of that same kind of data point. Yeah. Um, it's, but it, some dashboards don't need that too, though. Yeah, and it depends on the depth uh, of the data specifically too. It depends mm -hmm. on how intense and deep it goes. Like if you're looking at a bar chart, um, you know, uh, oh God, I can't think of an example. Um, if you're looking at a pretty simple bar chart, that's like a snapshot of right now um, and say the number of projects you have or you, which department has how many projects or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um that might just be the the terminal point of looking at that data. That might be all you need. But then mm -hmm. there's another follow-up graph that shows things over time or shows other dimensions that you'd want to grab a list of people from or a list of something else. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is, I, I think this is exactly where, and is so answer these, <laughs> these questions because they're, extremely dependent on yeah. the use cases. Um, so the generic. first time Andrew, we had this question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a dashboard is just a, it's not just a dashboard. It's a journey. It's a, the beginning of a journey. Where it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you know that it's clickable or not, by the way? Hover state. Kind of a hover state. Mm -hmm. Hover state. I like it when there's like uh, buttons or callouts too. Like say for this, let's say for example, there's a bar chart and it's telling us about um, sales per city or sales per, per type of product or something. You could actually have a preview underneath of the top five best or top five worst out of your set of 100 products or 100 cities, it could be the top five that you're interested in. And then you could say, see more. And that could go to another table. Or you could maybe click directly if, depending on the need of the user, like I need to be concerned about my best or my worst city or product or whatever it is, then maybe I can click that directly without going to the other page with the enormous table on it. Mm. Hmm, interesting. Is the dashboard a story or a punchline? So there's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, there's different types of dashboards. You got like, Ooh. you know, operational, analytical, and and different different needs. So um, someone who's checking out um, their employees' performance, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and checking out everyone's sales versus. Um, if I'm actually the salesperson and I'm checking out all of the products or maybe my companies or whatever I'm happen to be monitoring, there's different things that we're desiring for the person who's checking out their employees. Maybe they just need to get the overview, but for the analytical person, maybe they want to dig down and yeah. have actions. Or a monitoring, um, you know, in the case or the use cases around like a mon monitoring of, of an emergency, you know? Yeah. I mean, the closest emergencies that we usually know is like website goes down. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Your, your product goes down, server screws up or whatever. In which case you're not, you're like, you're trying to spring into action as quick as you can rather than like, let me dig into that a little bit more. That's mm. probably in later once you've put your fire out that you want to. Yeah. We're saying a lot of things, but what we're saying is that without the context, we can we cannot yeah. have that. And don't and and don't try to make a generic rule because it oh. probably won't work. Mm. <laughs> mm. It won't work every time. It requires some parameters around making those decisions. You can't just do it yeah. like do it like this thing. Um, that's mm. why dashboards are so damn hard. But it's okay because we wrote a really amazing article on dashboards. Wait, what? 
<laughs> we did. We did. It's on pencilandpaper.io. Yeah. Yeah, I've got somewhere. Oh, yeah. So, it's right here. Wonderful. Yeah. So take a look at it. One of them. Thank you, Kira. So yeah, good, good, good amount of problems that we fixed today. We have another one now. Um, again, it's your uh, turn again. Okay. What's good copy to indicate addition, deletion, and updation Ish. of employee data in a data table? So there's a section that shows all of the addition of new employees and deletion of employees who left the company and updates in the personal details of any employees. What do you think will be good copy for this? Hmm. Hmm. So like an, a little indicator of the latest change that happened on this item? There's a change. Like edited sure. two days ago or something? Edited? Okay. Well, or or, but well, that that's that's, that's well, that of... it depends. If there's a fixed number of actions you can edit, maybe it's like, you know, promoted X number of days ago, or, you know, if there's like a handful of options, we might be super precise, or not. Uh, if if it's very broad, maybe it's just like edited by someone X number mm -hmm. of days ago, but for the added and deleted. Added. I think for me, it there seems to be like industry standards that I would probably stick with. The industry people of in this this category would would have better um, <laughs> uh, suggestions. But I I've been working on something a little bit similar, and they use the words like terminated to say this employee has left. Um, termination <laughs> there's so also dramatic. like um sometimes they have an a request um then there's also um, what do you mean by request like headcount request so this is going to be a position that will be filled by a future employee so and do then, you see what do you see as a copy there so for me in that particular case i saw the word request and requisition specifically called a requisition oh. so, yeah. so, so the, you have the microcopy on the next action or what, what mm. or, or the last action yeah okay great so, uh, update um deletion mm. addition that's great if mm. there's any updates general updates you, you change your address or you change whatever mm. think about something more general mm. and how it live with a specific also well, there's there's opportunities for copy versus visual indication. I think hmm. here too, um, because if you have a column for recency of updated of of stuff that's updated, and by whom, then you know recent all the recency stuff. Um, like, or you can gauge across the rows, like what was the newest thing that happened, uh, or which which people have been um changed and mm. how long ago it was um so mm. you know if there was specific uh fields that were changed does does the user actually need to know that do they need to like, visually perceive that when they look at the at the row of the person i don't know well in this description it says there's a section that shows all the Added, deleted, blah blah blah. So maybe this is more of a, a oh. way, log, mm. like a little newsfeed mm. of like what happened in the app recently. And then yeah, each row should be super specific about like this employee had this change made to it by this person on this mm. day. Um, but then again, how much detail do you need? If this is super important for your system to be like able to go back and revert or troubleshoot something wrong that might have happened. Maybe it has to be super detailed or it can really just be like employee name, got number, like a name of action on date. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, yeah, if these were section headers, that would be a specific case compared to mm. an audit or trail. Um, but I would also say that like copy stuff, straight up copy like this is so easy to test. Mm. Um you don't have to do a clickable prototype. You don't have to, you 
barely put a wireframe together, <laughs> honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a high fidelity, that's cool. If you use your dev tools to on a live thing to just change the <laughs> change the words and screen share. Um, A/B testing is, also, why not? Yeah, like you you can get you can even send out an email with it or like a Slack message and get quick mm -hmm. responses because sometimes with this copy stuff you cannot predict what how people are going to perceive the meaning until you talk to them mm. um like i had a, a case where i was doing a project screen and it had a status indication on each of the product pro, uh, projects and it was sort of like a badge and mm. because all of the ones were open at the top it just said open 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 and someone was like oh how do you open these and they're like oh let me click open Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> There's but, a button saying open. Yeah. But the, it's not a button saying open. It's a status it's saying open. open. So I just I would have never predicted that. So um, that would be one uh, kind of thing I would point out in this question mm -hmm. problem. Uh, I would do less interviewing and research and just you know testing multiple variation until mm. I know more. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Copy is great for that. It's very great. For mm. that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes like the best, the smart, like the best part of your design is just having gotten the right copy. Obviously, this person wants to get the copyright, so they know that already. But <laughs> for copy, sometimes what I do, and I rarely do that, is I let people design it. So I just go over, you know, a ton of employees, for example, and what will you say here, and just develop what you want to do, and it will give me some direction on what I should test, you know. Um, so specifically, because I need to validate it. Yeah. yeah. And specifically with employee stuff, um, we've learned recently <laughs> that um, some people are using really large systems like SAP and Workday and, and those sort of things to manage these data sets. And they have established they have, vermin yeah. already that you can steal. You could just and, ask. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah. And then it may match the mental model of the person. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes asking is, is 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 the part of UX uh, stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now the last fun thing that you all love or hate on LinkedIn, A <laughs> or B, and why? The why is more interesting here. Or the A or B. Okay. Should we do fingers? Oh. We'll do one for A and two for B. Oh, let's do that. Hmm. Okay. Oh, let me think. Let Wait. me think for a second. Hang on. Let me do again this, this, but also have this option. <laughs> I'm, you can do this at, at the count of three if you want to. Uh, this is a... So? <laughs> oh, we'll... We'll wait for me again. Take your yeah, sorry. time. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody's uh, watching. Well, well, I think we should just talk about this. I'll this just I'll just throw a number. Safe place. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, let's go one. Two. Ah, interesting. <laughs> let's this? explain why. This is. I have my explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Uh, Megan, because you. Uh, no, no. I will wait uh, for you at, at the end. Uh, Fanny. Why? Why? Okay. I'm building. So, okay, this means yes and no because mm. if we go literally with this example, mm. I think A works best for a list of like three to ten items. Uh, that A is a quick mm. input, and you can click out and close it, and it's fine. But B is very often necessary to have like an explicit confirm button. If this is like a super long list, you can search in, and you might be like in the list for two minutes, and then you you know you've navigated so you do want to be like i'm done now mm. so yes and no <laughs> mm. quantity okay and kira why why one one why hey um i think that there's with option b there's too much redundancy built into this ui mm. um because I'm assuming that the behavior is that I select protein and it instantly goes into my text field. So I have confirmation that my action worked in both mm. the state of the checkbox and the field. Um, I can cancel easily with the X at the end of the field. 
And um, I'm just my personal preference. I'm a bit of a click out person. You're a click um, out person. I'm a click out person. You're a click out I just, and yesterday I had this exact thing happen to me when I was using Google contacts to make a group of people. I put, I clicked on like, add the tag. I hit it. I clicked out. It didn't work. And so then I went back and did it again. So I wasted time because mm -hmm. of this exact problem. Cause I didn't hit the confirm because I guess I don't respect <laughs> the <confirm> step <laughs> at a really fundamental level. Um, but if this was a, a context where this actually like fully initiates the filter to run or something like that could also kind of be different. But in general, there's a lot of UI redundancy, I, I feel like, in option B. Um, and, 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 and for me, it's just that drop down in mobile is just a nightmare most of the time. That's what I'm afraid when, when you, you have to click a lot of things mm. in mobile. And so sometime a confirm button on mobile, I don't hate it because I could do a lot of mistakes. But I wasn't built of it. I had to, cho to choose. But feel weird. This year, I feel weird. There's a lot of things. Mm. Uh, a lot of things. I don't, I don't know why exactly. It's, 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 mm. uh, we need some kind of a drop down and tag stuff to choose ingredients. It must be a better way. It's just because we have a, a lot of stuff. I'm not sure. I will que we question why we have this. But yeah. Yeah, the mobile stuff is always very frightening for me. Megan, did you have time to think? Yeah. Um, so A fits with my first mental model a little bit easier because, and then I started to, I was stuck on thinking, why did it fit? Because I've actually also encountered B as well. Same for what fam, exactly for what Fanny was mentioning. Like when mm -hmm. there's like stuff going That's on, true. sometimes things are in, embedded in another thing too. And I think the thing that I was stuck on, and I think I've what I'm kind of arriving at is the the tags are already inside of the field. So it tells me when I type it or I check it, it's already in the field. If I like I don't need to confirm, like it's it's already there. If the tags weren't there yet, if I was checking things off and then I hit confirm mm -hmm. and then the field populated, that kind of makes sense to me. Um, so I think maybe that's kind of the mismatch. Um, likewise, maybe this is part of a larger form and then maybe there's a, there's a general confirm, like after several fields, if you're going to mix things up and, and stuff, that could be where the confirm button is. So right now for me, um, B feels a bit weird just because the tags are already in the field. I don't need to confirm it's already populated. So that's kind of unnecessary. And I think the two, the stakes don't feel very high to confirm. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> fruit and grains, you know, like it doesn't feel like, oh, mm -hmm, mm. be careful. You better not get this wrong. But as you know, as Fanny says too, like it could be mm. actually part of a more complex workflow mm. uh, where maybe the stakes are higher and you want to have some friction there and efficiency mm. is actually not the number one goal mm -hmm. I don't know. yeah you cannot have ux without friction absolutely yeah ah great five problems in less than 30 minutes how do you feel i feel uh, great fired up yeah we want more <laughs> yeah so if you well if you want more we just should ask for it if you have any you know any problems just comment below and we'll play with it we'll swarm around it so there it is um that was fun. It was a great thing to do, no? No, yeah. no whimsical, no yeah. Figma just talking about it. Yeah, those are problems. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, good. So see you, everyone. See you next time. And until then, yeah. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Like the skaters.